Uh, actually, when I did the, uh, the Space Oddity video, that was a shirt provided by the Russian Space Agency. And the American shirts are all, they have like little alligators on them and they're very nice looking. The Russian shirts, there's some sort of throwback. There are ones with the red and white stripes, so like Gilligan up there, and this is our, our Where's Waldo. It's kind of colorful when you put on all the ru Russian shirts, but uh, the one that I wore during Arari, the ru I wore the Russian shirts. That's for sure. The shirts I wore. Well, you were actually also, just to brought that up, uh, when you were here, uh, we were talking backstage on Thursday, you were talking about uh, some of the difficulties of uh, the US and, uh, and, and the Russians working together when they actually had to work together in the space race. And I wonder if you could kind of tell us about you know, the, those political problems. Yeah, it's interesting because the, both the, the Soviet, now Russian, and the American programs are so uh, original and proud and originally very competitive. Um, and at the end of Apollo, and of course with the start of Soyuz, there was the, uh, the clever idea to use one of the Saturn V's to, uh, to dock an Apollo with a Soyuz, Soyuz Apollo. The Americans call it Apollo Soyuz, the Russians call it Soyuz Apollo. Which, and there's even Soyuz Apollo cigarettes for sale now in Russia, which is just bizarre to me. Soyuz Apollo that's cigarettes. That's exactly the same as this venue. It was the back of Apollo, and it was the... What was it? Carry on. <laughs> So when, when the Russians Soyuz docked with the Russian spaceship, it's very simple. There's, there's a probe stick. They had to come up with a design, and they wanted something simple. So they have this long pole with a knob in the end, and there's a big matching sort of open cone on the space station. And the knob comes in. If it hits a little crooked, it's great, because it's self-centering, like throwing a basketball into a, a trash can. It centers and bangs. It goes in, latches, and pulls in tight. Nice, simple mechanism going in like that. But when the Americans and the Soviets were in a dock together. Uh, because of the unfortunate imagery of that, <laughs> neither nation wanted to be on the cone end. <laughs> I kid you not. And so, in fact, they called on the, on the brightest engineers they could in the Soviet Union to come up with the androgynous peripheral docking system. The APS, and it is to perfectly equal and opposite three tongue things that come together, you can't tell which side is which sex. And they come through, and they touch, and then they latch, and they pull together. So whenever the shuttle docks with the International Space Station, or the, uh, the follow-on vehicles that are coming from the American side, they use the androgynous peripheral docking system. But when it's just Russian on Russian, that works great. <laughs> I was up for six, I commanded it for the last three. For three months. So how challenging is it? I mean, it looks like a beautiful high-set piece of apparatus. I mean, how, how often does it break? It breaks every day. If something breaks every day. It's, it, I mean, you're, uh, you're kind of everything on board. You're, you're, you're the lab technician, you're the lab rat, uh, you're ready to go and fix stuff, you're the cameraman. Uh, but stuff breaks all the time. We're forever musician. fixing it. Yeah, musician and uh, And so, uh, the to I think I fixed the toilet four times in six months up there. Because it's an important piece of kit up there. You, want the <laughs> you probably know the guys on the way to the moon, there was no real toilet in the Apollo capsule. They used uh, Ziploc bags. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> 